Hello everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to download and install point, uh, Python 3.3 or 3.2 I think is what it's on um, because someone, their name will be on the screen now recommended that I make all of my Python videos again in 3.x because some things did change for example uh, the URL lib 2 does not exist anymore, it is now URL, just URL lib before there are two separate ones um, the actual classes and functions and all those have changed. The print function has changed in syntax and there is no longer a raw input, there is only input. And so it was a great recommendation, I thought, to go over Python 3 and basically recreate all of my uh, previous videos. So up here in your title bar, just type in www.python.org. And then you should get a screen that looks like this, and it'll say release candidates for Python 3.2.4 and 3.3.1 have been released. Um, it's always best to stay up with the latest version before uh, 2.7.4 was the stable and most latest uh, release of Python. Um, so that's what I used before. Now we're going to install Python 3.3.1. This is also going to be on how to upgrade to this because I still have two, uh, yeah, 2.7.4 installed. So we can go down here and you'll see download, bzipped, xz, gzipped, and then you'll see Windows x86 um, MSI, and then x86 64 MSI. And then you have essentially the same thing for uh, Mac OS X. Because I'm on Windows, I'm going to select the Windows installer and this will take about a minute or actually it's not even a minute anymore it's like 10, 10 more seconds so I'm going to use that time to talk to you guys real fast um, with Python 3.x there's a lot of changes in it so that's why I'm going over it um, I'm not sure if I already said this but URL libs changed and all that kind of stuff so it's just better to update if you haven't already so you're just going to open up the installer, press run. There's probably a similar thing for Mac. Um, if you're on Linux, you probably already know how to do it. Um, if you don't, just go like Google how to open up a uh, tarball. Um, I would also recommend opening up the gzip or the bzipped tarball because xz is just kind of weird. I've never really liked doing that. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird, but uh, it is really simple to do on Linux. Um, you just run like make make install or uh, dot slash configure make make install and then it's done anyways run this it'll say preparing to install come up with this install for all users um, I'm just going to say for all users because there's only one user really on this computer or on this hard drive I guess because I do have a Linux hard drive but uh, next and then Python blah blah, blah says all this kind of stuff and then what you can say is um, you can actually specify add python.exe to your path but I will be showing you how to do that um, manually later on you can say it will be installed on local hard drive entire feature will be installed on the local hard, uh, hard drive and then uh, entire feature will be unavailable um, just because it's a good idea just say um, add python.exe to path and then just say will be installed on local hard drive or you can say entire feature either way um, but entire feature will be unavailable may not be the best thing um, I think that just won't add it to the path but I'll show you that anyways so if you want you can just leave that the same anyways we're going to press next it'll actually install this and this may take a little bit of time so I'm going to pause the video okay once that's done just press finish and you're pretty much done now we're going to minimize this and open up our Windows Explorer so we can go here. Go into your C drive or whatever drive you installed it onto and go down and you'll see Python 2.7 and Python 3.3. Now click on Python 3.3, go into it, and you want to see Python application right there. Okay, you need to make sure you know this directory. For If you install it the same way I did, it's C drive colon or C colon slash which by the way either slash um, will work if you're on Windows uh, 7 
some people were telling me that I needed to go over like backslashes in one of my videos on uh, Windows, but that actually is like really outdated. I don't think anything since like I th I think even Vista would take either slash, but um, Windows XP took only took backslashes, but you can use either one. So, anyways, so C colon slash Python 33 and then uh, Python.exe is what we want to specify. Now, to get to your path variables, you're going to open up your little start menu over here. Go to Computer, Properties. We'll try open up this one. Go to Advanced System Settings, which, by the way, you have to be admin to do this. You had to be admin to install it, so you probably that probably doesn't matter to any of you unless you're someone who's going, why won't it let me install it? Then, once you open up the System Properties window, click Edit. Um, not edit environment variables and then here you'll see path now if you say edit or yeah you say edit you can go in here and just edit it into this um, field if that isn't what you want to do there should also be a path down yeah there's a path down here system variables and you can say edit and it turns out that setting that I told you to set earlier will install it for you into the path variables. If you said that uh, it would be unavailable, all you have to do is just go to the end of the string and type in c colon slash python 33 semicolon and we can compare that to what it says at the beginning. I'm going to get rid of that because it's already there, but if it's not already there for you, now you know it's type and you're fine. Or actually, my bad. You want to end this line with a semicolon, then do C colon slash uh, Python 33. The semicolon is to make sure that um, it says that Python 33 is a different file from this. Otherwise, it will look under this directory for that, and that won't work. It will cause problems. Then after that, you want to log in or log out, then log back in. But since it already added it to the system variables for me or for us, depending if you set the same variable or same options, then we don't need to do that. Now if you want to uninstall Python 2.7, the folder is right here and it has all this kind of stuff in it. Um, I have some extra files in there because there are things that I've like installed over time and things like that. You can either delete the folder, which is probably more clean, or you can tell Windows to uninstall it by going to Control Panel, Uninstall Program, Wait for all this stuff to load, and then uninstalling each one of these. You would just say uninstall, yes, and it will say preparing to remove, yada yada yada. I'm going to pause the video while I remove this. Alright, now that that's removed, we can close out of that. And then go into Python, or you can delete this folder if it still exists. Um, just be sure to refresh your page. So that still exists. You can leave it there. I'm going to leave it there because it has files that I might want to look into later. But um, the actual program is not here. And so, yeah. But you can still run those files if you change the things that different, uh, differentiate it from uh, Python 2 and Python 3. Now, if we go into Python 3, we can kind of look around. We see we have Python and we have our include folder, which has these uh, C header files because Python is programmed in C. You have your lib, which has all your libraries and modules that you would import, and all that kind of stuff. Fun, fun, I know. Now, what we're going to do is go to start, and then, even though you can't really see this, we're going to type in idle. Um, I'm pretty sure idle is still like installed by default with this, all of this. Um, if it's not, then uh, sorry, um, but you can go back to python.org and install it, and then you'll have like this live interpreter. Now to make sure that it's added to your system variables, before I forget, open up command prompt and type in Python. If you have this console, awesome, Python is installed. Uh, people may tell you, also press exit in parentheses to exit it, people may also tell you to do like Python tack version or something like that. Um, I don't know, tack v? Anyways, they'll tell you to do something like that and um, it just gives you the version number. You don't need to do that. It's really unnecessary to do that. If it gives you a console at all, it's installed right, trust me. And it'll say like Python 3.1 blah 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 right here. 
which means yay it works anyways thank you guys for watching this tutorial i'm sorry if it was longer than what i expected or what you expected but now you should have python 3.3.1 release client or release candidate one installed perfectly um hopefully and yeah if you guys have any problems or questions or anything like that leave them in the comment section below or pm me if you like this video you found it helpful pre uh, please press the like button share it and subscribe all that kind of stuff always helps me out and that would be really good of you thank you and um yeah anyways thank you guys for watching and i'll be seeing you in the next video